Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're talking about bumping up process and how to apply microbes when we are officially bumping up. I have officially bumped up a huge majority of my plants so far. Um, and I just started my tomatoes and all like my four to six week and some of my eight weeks are just getting started now too. And the reason for that is because I was sick and I didn't really want to move. So I am going to be doing um, this guy here for you today. And we're just gonna go through the whole process start to finish. Something really similar to my seed starting video. There's a lot of new gardeners out there that maybe not necessarily um, don't understand fully what to look for, what to do, when it even comes to like filling containers and that sort of thing. So it's going to maybe sound really meticulous for some people who've done this time and time again, but bear with me. And the new gardeners, everyone needs to learn at their own pace. So here I have some habaneros um, and in my seed starting video, I described to you that I will do three seeds per cell. So this is one cell. Um, when you pack your cell nice and tight, you'll get really, really healthy roots. You'll get lots of fruits. Um, and so that's what you can see here. And out of the three that I uh, did plant, I got two habanero plants. Now you have two options here. First option would be to pinch off the little guy and then dispose of them and not use them. Or if you decide to keep them, you can. Um, and you just have to separate him from the adult. Trust me, it will give him a much better life. Um, and it just means more plant. And your other plant will do a lot better as well. Less competition for resources. So the soil that I have in these containers is from uh, Mind and Soil. It's a Canadian company based out in BC. And it's a mixture of worm castings, uh, peat, and some other odds and ends. So that means it's going to have a little bit of chitin or insect frass, which will cause the autoimmune um, response in the plant, which will hopefully protect your plant in the future from potential invaders. And it's just a nice mix of some fertilizer. Now, when I fill these containers, I do fill them up pretty high and then I will push down and where they sit is kind of where they sit. So usually there's like a line around the inside of your plant containers and that's where I will let it sit at because that allows some room for watering when we actually water the plant itself. So before I go ahead and plant him in his uh, container, I am going to apply some microbes. So this you should pour out into a dish, but quite honestly, I'm gonna end up using a huge majority of this here today. So I don't mind getting things a little bit dirty. And you're just gonna do a little bit of a dip into your microbe product, whatever it may be, and powder those roots, and then transplant into the potting soil. Something to keep in mind here, when you do go to transplant is that your seedlings, um, your mix that you put them in is going to have a big effect on how well your micro product will do. So if you have a mix that's really high in phosphorus, for example, you will run into some issues, uh, namely, lack of mycorrhizal fungi symbiosis or growth. So it can uh, cause your kind of spores almost to go dormant in a way. And that is because the roots on our plants, when they have enough phosphorus directly in the vicinity, they won't release the exudates to call in for more phosphorus. So they're not going to release the army, I guess for lack of a better term, to tell the microbes to collect more and make more foss. So you're probably wondering, well, how does that affect mycelium or how does that affect uh, microbes in general? And 
specifically with the mycelium, the main purpose or one of the big roles that it plays with the symbiosis with the plant is actually phosphate solubilization in the soil and increasing just that reach for phosphate in the actual soil profile. So if the plant has all the phosphate it needs in and around its vicinity, it will never release the exudates that will cause the spores or the mycelium to grow and to intermingle with the plant, which means your product that you spent your hard-earned money on is going to lay dormant. So that is something that you want to keep in mind when selecting both a potting soil, but also when looking at the fertilizers that you utilize in your uh, seed starting setups. Now, I like to use fertilizers that are high in phosphorus in general. And the reason for that is because I, so this one I'll, I'll top up a little bit, but you can plant your peppers pretty deep. So for me, what I like to do is I will, I'm trying out this mind and soil uh, mix here, and it doesn't have, like I don't know what the NPK um, numbers on it are, but I don't think that it's at all significant um, in the sense that it's going to harm my mycelium production or, or cause my spores to lay dormant. But what I will do is whenever I'm using a mycelium product such as this, is I will uh, pull back on fertilizing with anything that has a lot of phosphate in it or phos in general, and then also for organic amendments that would be added again, you're going to want to hold back on phosphorus whenever possible. The exception to that is when I go to actually transplant the plant outdoors, I will water in the plant with a fertilizer that is really nice and high in phosphorus because it does help reduce transplant shock. That is just something to keep in mind there. But yeah, other than that, that's kind of all I do. And obviously label, so these are my perma mistakes. This is also a Canadian company. And this is the best marker to use in the garden, is UV resistant. So I'm gonna just put my labels here before I forget, and then fill out my plant journal as well. But that's all I have for you guys today. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and let me know in the comments down below if you're at the bumping up stage yet, and uh, whether or not you are going to be bumping up this year. Some people don't do it. I recommend it because that little bit of root damage is a good thing. It helps with branching, um, more root hair formation, that sort of thing. So I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.